In case you missed it, here's Dave and Cheryl's favorite moments of the week. Have you ever been so exhausted all you wanted for dinner was a cup of noodles? You know, just peel back the lid, fill the cup with water, toss it in the microwave. Well, if you've done that in the past, this might be alarming to you. So the maker of cup noodles just announced that they're switching the packaging from the polystyrene cups to paper cups next year. Which means cup noodles will now be microwavable for the first time since it was introduced back in 1973. And needless to say, that set off a bit of a firestorm online where people were like, wait, what is you couldn't you weren't supposed to put them in the microwave? No, if you read the packaging instructions, it actually says to add boiling water. It's like boil the water in a kettle and then pour it in. They say the current polystyrene cup is not microwavable. Um, but, you know, people have been out there microwaving these bad boys since 1995. <laughs> One person said, every day I find out I spent my whole childhood doing random damage to my tiny body. I don't think I've ever put those ones in the microwave. I've always used a kettle. It's been a long time since I've had a cup of those types of noodles or whatever. Yeah, I never really did the cup ones. I always bought like the ramen, like mm-hmm. the packages where you have to like put it in. Like uh, like on the stovetop or something. I mean, instead. you could you could technically put those in the microwave, I guess, in a microwavable bowl. Yeah. And put the water in that. But way. that that was not a microwavable bowl. No. Oh, no, no, it's, it's styrofoam. What do you it's styrofoam. No. Yeah. So don't be putting it in the microwave. All right, friends, super fans. We know there's a lot of you out there. Here's a question for you: Would you have been able to handle it? if Chandler cheated on Monica. And we're not talking about they were on a break or were they not on a break situation. Straight up cheating on Monica because apparently it almost happened. Uh, An actress by the name of Lisa Cash was apparently hired to play the woman that Chandler would cheat on with after having a fight with Monica. They even rehearsed the scene and everything, but... Matthew Perry just wasn't feeling it. The scene was Chandler and Monica were arguing in Vegas about Monica having lunch with Richard. And Chandler goes up to the hotel room, orders room service, and I bring it up as a hotel worker. And we end up talking and laughing and connecting. And Chandler ends up cheating on Monica with my character. We had rehearsed it and everything. And then the day before we were shooting in front of a live audience, I was told that Chandler went to the writers and said the audience will never forgive him for cheating on Monica, which he was probably right. <laughs> that would have changed possibly the course of the show and of his character. It really could have. I mean, the dynamic amongst the six of them, if he had cheated mm-hmm. with the other five or a bunch of them, would some side with him, would some side with her? I don't. I don't think he'd be able to come back. I mean, smart of Matthew to in that moment go, you know what? I I don't see this working out in the long run for any of us Mm -hmm. in that moment. It's one thing if they were to show him flirting with her or whatever, but to go all the way through with that infidelity? Yeah. That's pretty heavy stuff for a comedy show, right? That, that, That now you're verging into like, this is us or something, right? You're getting, you're getting into that sort of territory Mm -hmm. versus being a, you know, a comedy show that had some, some, some serious moments, but. Not to that extent, right? Because they weren't on a break. Yes, indeed, it is a small world. And, you know, every once in a while, you have to go to the bathroom. All of us do. However, how about you don't do it in the line at Disney? Uh, A news website called SF Gate just did a big um, investigative report into this longstanding rumor that... Some Disney guests are so desperate to keep their spot in line that they resort to relieving themselves right on the ground. And according to the article, it really is true. And it happens at Disneyland and Disney World more often than you think. Someone on Reddit recently said they saw a parent let their kid go while standing in line for the ride Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. And employees backed them up in the comments. They said there was actually three poop related incidents that day just in that one line. For that one ride. And kids aren't the only ones doing it, unfortunately. They say it just doesn't happen as often. Uh, Another worker at Disney World says there's a specific hallway that they call the poop hall because it happens there so much. Apparently, it's in the line for the ride uh, Avatar Flight of Passage. And that's kids and adults that are going on the floor. Yeah. Two former Disneyland janitors also talked about it in a book they put out in 2015 called Cleaning the Kingdom. And there's a whole chapter called Disgusting Things. It's so common. They actually have a secret code for it. So if they're, uh, they find poop, 
They say it's a code H. H used to stand for that a horse had relieved itself on Main Street, right? In one of the parades. Now the H also stands for human. I mean, what should you do if you're halfway through a four-hour line and need to use the bathroom? They say just flag down an employee and tell them. They'd much rather let you back in line so maybe that employee can hold your spot than have to, you know, clean up after you. Well, and I'm thinking about, too, in some of these big lines for, you know, Star Wars or the Avatar ride, which are very popular, the lines can get up to be like four or five hours long, that you, I would assume most of the time you're there with friends or family, so they can hold your spot. And yeah, flag down an employee because they might have like, okay, I can let you into our, a guest bathroom that we have here. Or does Disney need to start installing bathrooms like at certain halfway points in the line. Like porta potties. I mean, you might not like the look of them, but you can do them up and oh, you know, have a have a Mickey Mouse one. It's and- Disney. I think they could afford to put in a permanent bathroom that like in those lineup areas because they you know, they snake around mm-hmm. so much that you'd be able to go in, pop out, and then just get back in line with your friends and family. No one's going to be upset about that. I know you've been to Disney. I've never been. Mm -hmm. Never really had the desire to go. Couldn't afford it at one point. I mean, I was a single dad for several years. Uh, But the idea of waiting in a line that long has zero appeal. I've done it at Wonderland for maybe a couple of hours, I think, for one of the Mm -hmm. rides. Because I remember getting to the point where it's like, from this point on, it's another hour. I'm like, oh, right? I couldn't imagine waiting four or five hours just to go online and then what did I step in is there a dog or oh oh my god that's that's not a dog are you a fan of the snooze button well you don't have to feel guilty about hitting it anymore a new study found that hitting snooze might not actually be a bad thing so researchers were like we can't really find a lot of proof that hitting snooze is actually bad for you so they decided to run their own study they brought in about 30 people to a sleep lab for a couple of nights So one morning, they got to hit snooze three times for a total of 30 minutes. And then the other night, they didn't get to hit snooze, but they let them sleep for that extra half hour. And they found that it didn't really make a big difference. When people hit snooze three times, they still got an extra 24 minutes of sleep, and it was good sleep. They say waking up for a few minutes didn't really matter that much. They said it didn't seem to affect their mood or how tired they felt. Didn't seem to affect any cortisol levels either. That's a hormone that helps us wake up. So does that mean we should all do it? Probably not. Everyone in the study was already a regular snoozer. And so maybe they're just sort of predisposition to it. Yeah, so, but I mean, if you are someone who likes to hit snooze, I guess this is... Good news. Uh, They also polled um, almost 2,000 people to find out why they hit snooze. And the top reasons were just too tired to get up. Uh, It just feels good to hit snooze and uh, that they prefer to wake up more gradually. Yeah, but what about your partner? If you get up like several hours earlier, I mean, my alarm goes off. If I don't wake up right away, I'm getting hit right? Mm-hmm. There's times where it's like, eh, eh, and I've got the old school alarm clock. <laughs> Not my phone. I have a backup on my phone, but yeah, yeah. Eh, 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 eh. my wife will be like, for the love of God, get up. Remember the picture of the dress a few years ago? Oh you know, yeah. Striped one color or stripes is the other color. Is it black and blue or white and gold? Mm-hmm. Right? That's what it was? Well, this is kind of similar, but in a different way. It's another one about a photo. A woman by the name of Tessa claimed she was so creeped out by a picture of herself at a bridal shop trying on a wedding dress that it almost made her sick. So in the photo, she's standing with her back to the camera in front of two mirrors. The wild thing about it is there's three versions of herself, the real one, the two reflections, and each have her arms in different positions. So in one, her arms are by her side, and the other, her hands are clasped. And she's like, it's not photoshopped. It was a legit photo taken with an iPhone, which is why she was so disturbed by it. So she took it to one of the Apple Genius Bars at the Apple store to ask them, what is going on? And she confused all the employees there except for one of the bosses by the name of Roger, who knew what it was. He's like, I've never seen it this bad or this scary. But what happens is an iPhone is not a camera. It is a computer. And so when an iPhone takes a photo, it takes a series of burst images very quickly from left to right. At the exact moment that it like cross behind your back, you raise your arms and then it's made a completely different image on the other side. And it's like made like an AI decision and it stitched those two photos together. And basically they told her it was like a one in a million illusion. 
She seems satisfied with that, but some people online are still having trouble buying it since it seems like if this were the case, more people would have discovered glitches in their images too. But I think it's because it moves so quickly and it's the reflection of the image, which is why you're seeing it like that. Now, I know you and I are both Android people, right? Mm -hmm. But your wife and like everyone else in my family, like my sister, they have iPhones. And have you ever seen when they do, my mom will be showing me photos and they do that like two second movement thing. I'm thinking that's what it was. So you can see the movement and then it just kind of takes a compilation of the, that burst photo of the little, the little like movement photo. I forget what they call it. Except she wasn't moving. She was standing in the mirror just posing. But she must, she moved her hands though. She must have moved her hands. She says she does. She didn't. She was just standing there. And in one photo, her hands are like weirdly bent at an angle. Another one, her hands are clasped. This just goes to show that AI, it's artificial intelligence. It's kind of just filling in the blanks of how they Mm -hmm. think the photo should look. How bizarre. She also joked that maybe it was a a glitch in the matrix. There was a time where you could drive around with those big, giant, fuzzy dice hanging off your rearview mirror, and Mm -hmm. that was cool. But then they outlawed those because... Oh, did they? Yeah, you can't really see well. At least in the States, they did. Makes sense. Well, now in the U.S., the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration wants drivers to stop putting rhinestones on their steering wheel. This is apparently a growing trend where people put decorative emblem decals over the vehicle's logo right in the center of the steering wheel. And you might be like, well, that why is that an issue? Well, officials say it might seem fun and pretty, but it can be dangerous and deadly when the airbags deploy and the decorations become shrapnel projection uh, um, projectiles. Yeah, they just come flying out of there as the airbag comes out. So they say at least one driver lost an eye when an emblem with rhinestones got dislodged in an accident ended up hitting them in the face. Wow. So now they're saying just leave your steering wheel as it is. So not sure though if that applies to you you remember those um you know those, uh, steering wheel covers like those leopard ones. I think one of my aunts had one on her steering wheel. And as a kid I was like, "Wow, that's kind of weird." You can tell whether or not you were raised in the metric age or the imperial age if you refer to it as a yardstick or a meter stick. Either way, people are online saying, what happened to these things? Do you still have one? If you're under 30 or even 40, a yardstick is like a ruler, but three times longer. And it seemed to be in every house. I remember having one in our house when I was a kid. I still have one in my house. I'm pretty sure I picked it up at one of the farm shows or the home shows Mm -hmm. that we used to go to. Uh, One of the, I think one of the insurance places would hand them out. Uh, Someone recently brought it up online though. And they said they actually had three yardsticks in their house growing up. Now they have zero. And the fun part is no one could really remember why we ever had one. Um, Because, you know, why would you need a yardstick in 2023? Well, someone did finally point out the obvious answer. It's what yardsticks were always for. You to get stuff out from underneath the stove or the fridge, right? You fall underneath, you can mm-hmm. reach underneath or maybe under the couch. But then someone else pointed out a possible reason. Yeah, they say they're pretty useful when it comes to things like sewing or measuring fabric. And, you know, not as many people are making their own clothes these days. And I'll say this. So I, I think the one I have is a yardstick, but like... I'm trying to remember back to my elementary school days, and I'm pretty sure we called them meter sticks because they were one meter, right? Mm-hmm. At least in my in, in my experience. I grew up partway through, so I was going into high school. They switched from imperial to metric. Oh, gosh. How confusing. Oh, yeah. Our grade nine uh, math median grade was like 53% maybe, and I think they may have pushed that up so everyone passed. Does anyone do this? According to TikTok, we should be storing a roll of toilet paper in the fridge. What? Say it again. You should be storing a roll of toilet paper in the fridge. Have they seen prices of toilet roll? And which one should it be? Is it the 8 equals 24 roll size? (laughs) Just a normal one-to-one roll? So my first thought was, well, does it provide like that nice cooling effect (laughs) when you go to the bathroom? Uh, But no, apparently the main reason that they say you should put toilet paper in the fridge is to absorb moisture. And help. And they say also claim that it helps with unpleasant odors. Does it actually work? Well, yes, but not as well as some people claim. Toilet paper is absorbent, so yes, it does soak up some of that extra moisture. But they say eventually you're just going to have a wet roll of toilet paper hanging out next to the vegetables. So experts say it can work in a pinch, but in general, 
don't be a weirdo. Just put you know baking soda in the fridge like a normal person does. But and by the way, uh, don't use it. They say for wiping after it's been in the fridge because it will have soaked up all that stuff. Well, just like how you're not supposed to use baking soda that's been in the fridge either, right? Mm-hmm. But then again, what is the price now? For baking soda. So maybe that's why people are doing it too, right? Because toilet paper prices have kind of leveled out a bit. Do you remember when everyone was hoarding them? Remember those videos from like Costco and stuff during the early days of the Mm -hmm. pandemic? People were stampeding because somehow they thought COVID, one of the symptoms was explosive diarrhea. When that, well, I don't know that that was a thing. No, people were panicking. I thought about um, supply chain stuff and that they were going to be like, you can't go to the grocery store even at all. Mm -hmm. So then it became, well, the supplies kind of replenished. And now people are using it and sticking it in the fridge. So, hey, give it a shot. Let us know if it works. It took four years, but four guys in England just got arrested for stealing a $6 million gold toilet. A gold toilet. Uh, The theft actually happened four years ago when a conceptual artist from Italy made this toilet out of 18 karat gold and named it America. Because why not? Supposed to be a commentary on the unbridled capitalism or something like that. Now, originally it was on display at the Guggenheim Museum in New York City, and you could actually wait in line (laughs) to go and use it. The time limit was three minutes. Yeah, to go in three minutes or less. Yeah. Uh, So eventually, the toilet was moved to a place in England called Blenheim Palace. It's a World Heritage site. It's where Winston Churchill was born. But then the golden toilet vanished in the middle of the night in September of 2019, and authorities have been searching for it ever since. Just goes to show you, right? No limitations on some crimes. And they keep looking, especially when it's something like this. And all four men between the ages of 35 and 39 are facing charges for burglary and conspiracy to transfer criminal property. Now, sadly, police don't have the actual toilet in their possession and they don't know where it is. But chances are they say it's no longer a toilet. They think the guys probably melted it down to sell the raw gold, like put it back into gold bar form. And then they actually, well, what they did was that they made a golden sink, which was weird, but they took the golden toilet and turned it, in, turned it into a golden tub. Or, or a bathtub, a golden bathtub. You've been listening to Dave and Cheryl's favorite moments of the week. 